Welcome to Design Your Destiny, your podcast for tapping into the power of your subconscious mind. In this next few minutes, allow me to show you how to tap into that power so that you can create success with ease, form deeper connections, and have greater presence in your relationships, and most importantly, find peace within yourself. My name is Penny Chason, and I'm your host. Hey everybody, Penny here, and checking in to see how you are doing with your first quarter goals. Whether, you know, it's something that's personal, something in your business, maybe it has nothing to do with either. But I'm curious where you are with those goals. Because right around now is the time where if we are going to have challenges with those goals, it starts to show up. It may start to show up in our thinking. It may start to show up in our subconscious decisions. I'll get to that in a little bit. But we're so enthusiastic. We're going all in on creating this change in our life or developing this idea, this project, maybe it's writing a book. I don't know what it is for you, but you go all in. You're all excited. You have the momentum, the motivation. You're doing things, and then little by little, we start to back off. We're taking our foot off the gas. Hell, you might even be putting your foot on the brake. You may be standing up on the brakes. (laughs) There's a lot of reasons that this happens, but I'm going to give you some tips today to get control over this. The first thing that I want to dive into is a little bit of neuroscience around habits. Our brains are wired to survive or thrive. And the way that we thrive is that we optimize, we're efficient as human beings so that we have a minimum calorie burn within the brain. The brain works to conserve energy. That's how it survives. And in this process, you know, our brain has laid down these neural pathways. This is where our habits come in. When we do things like choose a really radical New Year's resolution, and I've told you before to not set a resolution instead to pick a new identity and be committed to it. But that's another episode. When we change too many things at once, until we have that new habit ingrained, our brain is actually having to work to keep us on track. It takes our focus, it takes our attention, it takes planning, we end up thinking about things. Unless you're really good with like a um, a habit tracker on your phone with reminders, my notifications are always off on my phone. Now that I said that, they might actually be on today because I don't have any clients. And knowing my luck, the notifications will probably go off as I'm recording this, but it is what it is. You're following what I'm saying. Unless you're someone who can just really set it, forget it, and just go on and you actually follow through when those notifications come through, then you have to keep track of all these things. People who go in, and attempt to radically change their health through their lifestyle. Say they're not just changing one or two or three things around their diet, but they're radically changing their entire diet, their exercise routine, their sleep routine. They're just turning everything on its head. Then it becomes easy for the mind to dig in and not want to do that after a period of time passes. You know, once that enthusiasm passes until those new habits are built. It's just challenging. It it takes effort. The brain doesn't like effort. It likes efficiency. So that's one of the things. If you're running into issues and that's the source of the issue, I recommend that you do what's called stacking habits. And that is to take maybe three at most new habits and attach them to something else that you already do. So say you want to drink more water. If it's a health situation, then, you know, put a sticky note next to your toothbrush. It says drink a full eight ounce glass of water or 16 ounces of water when you brush your teeth. If 
you are working on expanding visibility in your business, maybe it's, I'm going to record 20 minutes of video. First thing every day before any clients, before I answer any emails, I'm recording 20 minutes of content. That's one thing, right? If you attempted to pile on a lot more, it just, it's going to slow you down because the mind gets overwhelmed. So that's the simple way to address those things. Now, if you have a personal trainer who's going to show up at your house and drag you out of bed by your big toe and yell and scream at you till you get in a cold shower and then you get dressed and you're in the gym, well, I guess that would probably work. But if I could afford someone like that, I would probably fire him the second time he tried to do it. So that would not work for me. Maybe it would work for you. Okay, so going back to finding yourself where you're having dwindling motivation, or you find that you started with great momentum, and now all of a sudden you can't really put your finger on the reason, but you're not doing the things that you know need to be done. It's important to ask yourself a couple of questions. One is, what is the benefit I get by avoiding this? The other could be, what do I think might happen if I do this? And if you've listened to the podcast for any length of time, then you'll know that I've talked about this before in different contexts. You need to go about seven layers deep. Keep asking yourself, well, what causes me to think that? Well, how does that make me feel? Well, what would cause that to make me feel this way? until you get down to the nitty gritty of what's going on underneath the surface. Once you have an idea of what misperception or false belief is creating a fear, yes, I said fear, I'll come back to that, underneath the surface, that's keeping you in this place where you're sidestepping, avoiding, distracting, then you, it's easy to do something about it. Now, so many times people say, I'm not afraid of anything. It's not fear. Yeah, I get that. I get that you want to say it's not fear, but here's the bottom line. Again, your brain is wired to survive or thrive. Any degree of uncertainty or concern over loss of something important to you is going to generate a fear response in the brain, even if you don't feel afraid. It generates that fear response because there is a part of your brain that its entire purpose is to monitor the status of your well-being, to help you to respond in times of anger, and to determine whether or not you're safe and secure. All comes back to well-being. If you think of a bell curve, you know, the big bell curve, on one end, you are completely 100% solid in the moment of your safety and security. All the way at the other end of the bell curve is that you are literally fighting for your life in a moment of fear. And then under the big bell, you have everything else that your brain is processing. Your subconscious mind processes about 20 million bits of information per second. Think about that. Your conscious mind, only like anywhere around seven to nine, some sources say 20 bits. But that's a million fold increase. The point being is that even when our attention is somewhere else, Your subconscious mind is constantly processing information. It is constantly going through scenarios. If you ever watch Star Wars, there's a scene where C-3PO, the um, robot, for those of you who are young enough, you may not know what I'm talking about, even though they have the the newer prequel series now. C-3PO spits out some odds, and Han Solo says, don't tell me the odds, never tell me the odds. I really hope I'm not mixing up my movies, but I'm pretty sure, pretty sure I'm right on that. Um, If I'm wrong, then that's okay. I just mix my movie metaphors, whatever. (laughs) 
but your brain is constantly computing the odds of are you safe or secure. So for example, say you have a business and you're expanding your business. You know, things have been on autopilot for a while. You have your systems in place. You have your team. Things are going smooth. It's great. And now you have decided that you want to branch out in a different direction. And this is going to require your time, your focus, your attention. You know that you are going to be putting in more hours than you normally do. And you're okay with that because you know it's temporary. However, if in the past, your health or your relationships suffered, or they weren't as good as you would have liked them to be, because you were so busy action taking in your business, your subconscious mind can say, hey, wait a minute, I do not like this. The last time we did this, I wasn't sleeping. I was always tired. I was cranky. You know, I I was grouchy with my significant other. You know, I have kids now. I don't want to deprive my kids of time with me because my parents always work so hard. They never have time for me. I don't want my kids to not have time with me. There are so many potential subconscious scenarios that could be going on underneath the surface around beliefs from observations, things you've witnessed, stories you've heard people tell you that cause you in that moment, your brain starts looking for excuses to avoid the behavior. So this is why we ask those questions. We never ask why, because that keeps us stuck in the problem. If we want to look for the solution, then we want to look for the cause, not why. That's useless. But what causes me to feel this way? What might happen if I actually follow through? Like, what am I looking at here? And then you can allow yourself to be aware of the thoughts and the feelings that come up. And once you've identified those, it's easy to shift them out of the way. On a recent episode, I had Lisa Carpenter, high performance coach, on the show. And she and I have actually known each other for quite a while. And just before I went full time in my business, like things were going really, really good. And then one day out of the blue, I was just like, I was like sitting in this place where I felt like I wasn't moving forward fast enough. I was frustrated. I was feeling up. I was feeling down. I'm like, what is going on here? Like there is nothing wrong in my life. There is nothing wrong in my business. Things are moving along perfectly well. And she and I chatted, and this is the benefit of having someone who is a coach or a hypnotist who can help you, you know, kind of, kind of rummage through the debris, you know, to find what's going on here. And she finally looked at me and she's like, so how long are you going to stay addicted to your struggle? And I was like, what? And I really had to sit and think about it. I had gotten into the habit of even when things were easy, my brain did not know how to do things that weren't hard. My entire career from nursing school to critical care nursing, I was always working, learning, stressing, working, learning, stressing, anesthesia, working, learning, stressing. Like, you know, in anesthesia, you were trained to anticipate problems. In critical care nursing, you were trained to anticipate problems. I was always anticipating a problem. So when things were going smooth, I was literally attempting to make it hard because that's what my brain had become conditioned to feeling safe and secure. So you see, this can go both ways. So if you're finding yourself in this place of not following through on the things that are going to get you to where you want to be. It's really important to dive into some silence, to ask yourself some good questions, to go into that awareness and allow yourself to know what might be driving any self-doubt or fear. Because even if it doesn't feel fearful, if your brain detects uncertainty, it's going to work to avoid what you're moving towards. It's biological. It's the way you're wired. I'll catch you next week. 
Thank you for listening today. If you've enjoyed this episode of Design Your Destiny, I would appreciate it if you would head over to iTunes and leave a positive review. When you leave a positive review, it's like podcast currency, and we can increase our reach and get the message to even more people that they, just like you, have the ability to design their destiny. And remember, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform.